on May 12th at 7.02. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Mr. Discipline. Here. Mr. Chassis. Here. Dr. Koshwell. Here. Mr. Lander. Here. Mr. Newell is absent. Mr. Neiman. Here. Mr. Petrucci. Here. Mr. Stovar. Here. Dr. Trey. Here. You have a quorum, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Lego. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of April 14, 2014? Motion. Motion by Mr. Lander. Second. Second by Dr. Kasha? Yes. yes. Question. Questions being called for. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Information, Dr. Harris. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to thank the coffee for her cause, and I'll give Greg its uh, care receipt to just have a quick explanation of coffee for the cause. <laughs> uh, I'm going to push it off to uh, Mrs. Uh, this is Edek. If you give us a little rundown of the coffee with the cause, please. Okay. Um, coffee for a cause has been open for three years. I think most of you are aware of that. Um, we um, raise money. We, we sell different products throughout the school day to the high school students during their study halls. And um, we raise money and we donate that money, any of our proceeds, to local charities. Um, we've also just recently started a scholarship for... Um, our life skills students, so we'll be using um, some of the proceeds for that as well. So that's pretty much it. We have right now currently uh, six students, six life skills students working in the coffee shop, some of which will be moving on next year to job placements in the community, um, some of which will be staying here in the coffee shop just depending on um, their skill levels and when they're ready to move forward. Um, the goal of Coffee for a Cause is basically to provide the life skills students with a, a starting place where they can learn um, job skills in a, an environment in the school environment where we can uh, guide them and teach them those skills and then they can move into uh, a job placement after high school or prior to after high school. And, and you can <laughs> so, so will you all be presenting your first scholarship this Thursday? Um, is it on? Thursday, yeah. Thursday. The two. Thursday. Yeah. Right. Scholarship um, awards night is this um, Thursday, by the way, at um, 7 o'clock at the high school. Thank you. Um, Lucas Johnson, our student union representative. Yeah, is, it, is it okay if I introduce the students? Yes, yes please. Please. Sure. Please. Robert and Luke. These are just three of our our star students that are um, working in the coffee shop. Two two freshmen and a senior. So very proud of the work that they're doing. And it was nice of them. To also thank you. Thanks. Uh, Representative Lucas Johnson. Lucas uh, couldn't be here. I think Mike Mazzell, is he here today? Mike? Calling once? Mike? No? Lucas Mike. said he had Mike coming to, uh, on his behalf, so I guess uh, we'll have to wait till next month. I guess the school's going great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, students of the month. First one, I have Mrs. Coiner from Sunrise. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Sunrise Elementary would like to congratulate the Elementary Student of the Month for May, Ms. Malin Sisson. Malin is here today with her family, her grandparents, her mom, her siblings. Um, Roxanne is sitting behind. She's the one with the camera. <laughs> uh, Malin is um, currently an 11-year-old fifth grader at Sunrise. Malin has three siblings, Colton, who is a senior at PT, Callan, who is a seventh grader at Trafford Middle, and a younger brother, Cooper, who is in third grade at Sunrise. 
We are so proud to have Malin in our school and our district. When I asked Malin's teachers to describe her, they stated that Malin has shown an intense amount of growth and improvement as the year progressed and her hard work and effort have been noticed by all of the fifth grade staff. Malin's teachers also described her as outgoing, a hard worker, has a positive attitude with everything that she does, and highly respected by her peers. Malin's homeroom teacher, Mrs. Gutwald, who is also here tonight, stated that Malin has worked extremely hard in math over the last few months. She is extremely responsible as well. She keeps her peers on task during group projects to ensure project completion. And on a personal note, Mrs. Gutwald has also watched Malin play with other students at recess that are alone in order to draw them into a game. When speaking with Malin, she told me that she loves school because she can interact with her friends and meet new people. Her favorite subject is math. She stated that it may not be her best grade, but it is more challenging to her and she likes challenges. As an educator, that warms my heart. Malin also loves to dance. She does jazz, tap, and ballet at Janet's Dance Studio four days a week. She competes in a group and as an individual. In her free time, she loves to jump on her trampoline or play in the woods with her brother. Malin would like to be a professional Broadway dancer when she gets older, and she really wants to go to a dancing school once she finishes high school. In talking with Malin's brother, Cooper, he told me that she really does like to dance. She will even go outside with me to jump on the trampoline. Cooper did say that he thinks his sister is very athletic and nice. <clears throat> I spoke with Malin's mother and she told me that Malin is very kind and she's a great helper. Malin is extremely caring and such a good girl and I am so proud of her. She is very busy outside of school with dance as it occupies a lot of her time. Mom also commented on her love of dance and she knows that Malin wants to attend Point Park when she graduates high school. Mrs. Sisson continued by mentioning, Malin works very, very hard in school because it doesn't come natural to her. Plus in the classroom and outside of school, she has wonderful friendships and that is what makes me most proud of her. It is my absolute pleasure to recognize Ms. Malin Sisson as the Elementary May Student of the Month. I am honored to be her principal. Congrats. Congratulations, Malin. There you go. So have you ever seen a Broadway show? Yeah. What did you see? Rockets. What is it? Rockets. Rockets? Well, good. Well, maybe one of these days we'll see you there. I loved it. When I went to New York City, I loved it. Hmm? And we're going to do um, photos at the end, too. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're proud. You deserve it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, um, next we have from Level Brain, Mr. Dan Denathlin. Okay. Gives me great pleasure to introduce Mia Muro as this month's Elementary Student of the Month. Mia is a third grade student in Miss Amy Kelly's class at Level Green Elementary. She is, the, she is the nine year old daughter of Shane and Laura Muro, who are sitting behind me and the younger sister to Hannah, who is in seventh grade at Trafford Middle, Shane, who is also behind me, eighth grade at Trafford Middle, <laughs> and the older sister, Haley, who is away at college over on the west coast in California. Mia is a well-rounded student. She has recently entered the gifted program and currently has straight A's. She enjoys competitive swimming year-round and playing soccer for the PT Soccer Club. Other activities she enjoys are riding bikes with her brother and sister and camping when they get, get a chance to go to the lake. I asked Mia what she would like to be when she gets older and she told me she hasn't thought too much about it. She enjoys being a kid right now. Good job, Mia. Stay right there. Mm -hmm. Mia's teacher, Miss Kelly, who is here as well, states Mia is a very personable and friendly girl. She gets along with both boys and girls in the classroom and often is the peacemaker between the kids that have a disagreement. She is extremely helpful with other children in her room. She will finish work, help others around her, and also help Miss Kelly do with, do do something to do something with that batting an eye. <clears throat> Mia has also developed a sense of humor more than any child that Miss Kelly has ever had. She feels she will be a fantastic stand-up comic. 
<laughs> She's the kind of child that you know you can count on to do the right thing, to tell you the truth about things, and if you have a substitute, she knows exactly how things are supposed to go. So she keeps an eye on the class. Ms. Kelly states, Mia could probably run my classroom. All right. With all that being said, Mia, I am so happy for you and congratulate you on being the elementary student of the month. So you have a joke for us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you do swimming and soccer. You want to do either one of them in high school? You can do both of them. You know, your season's done over that. Okay, I look forward to seeing you there. Next, we have the middle school winner this uh, month from Head Middle School, Mr. Jim Simpson. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Christopher, if you want to come down. I want to introduce uh, Christopher Risner, uh, eighth grader at Penn Middle School. He's our uh, May student of the month. He's the son of Steve and Linda Risner, and the younger brother, uh, Michael Risner, of Penn Township. Uh, talking to his parents, uh, they say Christopher is helpful, hardworking, and a conscientious son. He completes jobs around the house without being asked, and neighbors rely on him to walk their dog and take care of their chickens. And I had to ask, yes, take care of the chickens uh, when they are away. He also volunteers in the summer for Janet Area Mills and Wheels. Some of, his, some of his interests outside of school include piano, hunting, and soccer. He's an avid reader, and it shows in his creative writing and expansive background knowledge. Recently, he was selected by the Westmoreland County Sportsman League for a scholarship to, a Penn, to attend Penn State's Conservation Leadership School this summer. He will serve as a junior counselor at the Conservation School at Keystone, Keystone State Park. He's participated in Penn Trafford Junior Olympic Wrestling Program since he was five years old. He's a member of the Pitt Wrestling Club and wrestles on the junior high team. He's also involved in the band inspector programs at Penn Middle. They're extremely proud of his achievements. His brother Mike tells me that they get along pretty well, about as well as two brothers can. <laughs> uh, they're outside playing with friends a lot and have fun running around in the woods. I like that. He says his person, he says his brother is a good person and a good brother. Uh, speaking to Chris's teachers, they say he is an awesome and well-rounded student. He's extremely talented in the arts and has an innate ability to strive at all times to perform at his best level. He's a meticulous artist and his craftsmanship is outstanding, but he's also polite, respectful, and a joy to have in class. Another teacher just commented, great kid, exceptional academic abilities. Um, this last one I'm most proud of him for. A uh, teacher nominated him for his leadership ability and uh, his academic ability, but he also said his willingness to help his classmates. Uh, there have been numerous occasions where Chris goes out of his way to make sure classmates are involved. Situations where he could easily do his work, do his work himself, he appropriately delegates and makes sure group members are included, have a role, and gain understanding of the concept being studied, regardless of their academic ability. Without Chris's leadership, several students that would not have the confidence to, to participate gain the understanding that they earn in the class. He is truly an extraordinary young man with a high level of character. Um, as, I, as his principal, I've noticed Chris's leadership abilities since sixth and seventh grade, not just this year, in the hallways and especially in the classrooms as he participates. He is greatly respected by his peers. Uh, the staff and I are proud to present Christopher Risner as the May Student of the Month. Congratulations. Congratulations. I have to ask you, what do you do to take care of chickens? Uh, take their eggs, feed them, and water them. Okay. Well, it sounds like you have a lot of good skills that are going to take you far in the workplace, especially the management, the leadership skills. We're also always looking for good people with those skills. Good luck to you. Thanks. And for our high school student of the month, we're going to have Mr. Scott Inglis. Uh I have Matt Senkow. Matt, come on up, please. Matt is a senior at the high school, and uh, now he's here with his, his mom, Rick, and Amy Senkow, and he has a sister, Julie, who's in ninth grade, and he also has a brother, Timothy, who's in fifth grade at McCullough. Um, maybe you maybe you remember, he, what were you here, Matt? What was that? Back in the summertime, I think. 
he presented the the uh, student uh, credit union branch to to everybody. Uh, he was one of the three students that, that was really the founding father of one of the founding fathers of the student credit union. He interviewed among a, a number of kids, and he was selected as, as one of the three who would actually run the teller uh, in the school as a teller uh, two days a week in the in the building. And he also works at the credit union, which is right across from the Giant Eagle over there. Uh, he works there in the evenings and on weekends. And um, he's really uh, found his passion. He, uh, you know, his goal when he, uh, well, I guess last year, his goal was to go to school and become an electrician. But when I talked to him today, he said, yeah, well, the credit union screwed up those plans. So now he's decided that he's going to uh, be a finance major uh, as a result of what he has learned and experienced with, with the credit union. Um, you know, in the short time of working at the student branch, he really enjoyed uh, working in the finance world. Uh, as I said, he continues to work uh, after school on the weekends at the credit union branch of Penn Township. Um, Matt decided, uh, as I said, he wanted to change and, and take and have a concentration in, in finance, which I think is, is really what his passion is going to be. Um, the employees at the credit unit have said that he's one of the best employees that, that they've ever worked with over there. And um, uh, he's very, very highly regarded by the employees over there. He's, they speak very highly of him. He's taken all kinds of business courses here at the high school. He's been involved in accounting, computer programming, finance, business math. Um, He's always willing to help his classmates in those courses. He's also enrolled in economics class, and one of the projects that he just worked on was uh, he had to pitch a business to, to the class and to the teacher, uh, kind of like Shark Tank, if you ever uh, saw mm -hmm. that show on, on television. He had to uh, pitch that to, to them to see you know, if it was going to, I don't know what they did, they, they bought into it or didn't, and, and the teacher uh, gave him a big thumbs up. It was a, he said it was an outstanding presentation where he actually was going to put a, a putt-putt and arcade at the Rite Aid location on work Route 130 and had a whole business plan as, as, uh, for that to happen. And so if we can get that, that lawyer to work, that would help him out. <laughs> <laughs> and probably some of the old uh, parts of the old putt-putt are still there, because there was one. Yeah. Well, I told him that back when I was a kid, I used to play on the old putt-putt yeah. was there, and he'd know what I was talking about. But uh, there was a putt-putt there a long, long time ago. Um, one of the other big reasons why I have Matt here today, he's an active member of our FBLA, which is our Future Business Leaders of America. He placed first in the state of Pennsylvania in the uh, personal finance event. So that was quite an accomplishment. Um, in doing so, he qualified to compete at the national level, which will be held in Nashville, Tennessee this summer. So that's a great accomplishment. Congratulations, Matt. Um, he's an Eagle Scout, Scout, so you all know what that, that carries, a high level of integrity and the moral standards that, that, are, that are associated with that. His project was uh, involved a, plea tr uh, I'm sorry, a tree planting project over at Bushy Run Park, which, which he was extensively involved with and ran that program. His teachers say he's a great kid. He's someone you would want your children to have as a friend. He's a very kind worker. He strives for perfection in everything he does. It does not matter if he is doing homework problem or running an experiment in the lab. Matt is always very thorough and will not stop working until he is he and his classmates uncover the truth. His physics teacher said that. Matt is a clear thinking young man and has a level of maturity that is well beyond most people of his age. And he's one of the best business students to ever come through Penn Trafford. So uh, for all those reasons, I have nominated Matt as the student of the month for Matt. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Matt. Thank you very much. And good luck in nationals. Any college plans? Uh, I Besides finance. IUP. IUP? Mm -hmm. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Sure you'll do well. We're going to have photos with all the student of the months for the newspaper, but we're going to wait until right after the military signing ceremony. And we're going to turn that over to Mr. Inglis. We have, uh, we have five students we're going to recognize from the military. and. Um, as you know, it's a, it's a great sacrifice that, that these kids are going to commit uh, to give to our country over the next two, three, four years, however long they're going to commit. And uh, we certainly want to recognize that and are appreciative of, of your service and, and your intent to, to serve our country. Um, I have, we have three branches with Marines, National Guard, and Air Force represented today. So I'm going to have, if you don't mind, I'm going to have each recruiter come up here. And if you could just introduce your student and maybe tell us where he'll be stationed, where he's going to boot camp, or where he's going, and, and what his specialty area is. So, Sergeant Early, if you want to come on up, you're the, you're a fix, he's a fixture at the high school. He's up there all, every day. So, Sergeant Early's from the National Guard. Come on up, Tyler. <coughs> Sergeant Early, you're going to be the 
So yes, this is uh, this is Tyler Novotny, enlisted in the uh, Pennsylvania National Guard. It was actually on the 3rd of July, right? It's a good patriotic weekend, a good uh, good week to join the military itself. Um, Tyler's going to be going off to infantry, so he's going to and he's going to be stationed out of Indiana, Pennsylvania. Plans are going on to college in the future. And moving on from there. Congratulations. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Eric Quinter. <clears throat> Eric's going to the Air Force. And I don't know all the recruiters, so if you can introduce yourself, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I'm Staff Sergeant Stonesight from the Air Force recruiter. Uh, this is Eric Quinter. Come on, bud. Uh, Eric just recently enlisted in the Air Force. Uh, he'll be leaving sometime at the end of summer to attend boot camp at San Antonio, Texas, Lackland Air Force Base. Um, and he's automatically enrolled in the Community College of the Air Force, so he's also going to be going to school through the Air Force. Uh, he's kind of, we're kind of waiting to see what he's going to be doing full time as a job. He's really qualified, so we're kind of trying to keep his options open. But he's looking at either Intel or some kind of computer based job in the Air Force. So that's what he will be doing. So good job, Eric. And in the Marines, we have Cody Atkinson, Jared Frankenfield, and Sean Lander. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Staff Sergeant Shook, your local Marine Corps recruiter. Up here, I got Mr. Cody Atkinson. Uh, about this time last year, Cody stepped up to the plate and decided he wanted to take the 13-week challenge of the hardest training America has to offer. So I'd like to give him a warm round of applause for taking that challenge. I don't think Jared and uh, Sean were able to attend. Okay, thank you. I'm going to take a short break to have photos with the military and the student of the month, and we also have cake. And if everyone, please help yourself to coffee on us. <laughs> okay, it's that time of year where we need to adopt a preliminary budget. And keep in mind that it is preliminary. Uh, we have between now and June 19th, I think, when our meeting is, to make changes. Um, hopefully by then we'll have a little bit more guidance from the state what our subsidy is going to look like. Um, as you all know, it's an election year, so the governor's out there with this proposal of these additional funds for things we're not sure what we're going to use them for, but yet they're projecting a $1.2 billion deficit in the state budget. So the likelihood of us getting any new funds is, is very much up in the air. So we're not anticipating any new state funding. We're anticipating level funding for our basic education. Um, there's and of course, the big issue is retirement. The increase, it went from 16% the current year, it's gone to 21%. Next year, that alone accounts for about $800,000 in increases just in that one item. And that's about three mil, right? Right here. That's about three mils. Now, we'll be reimbursed partially on that. We'll get about half of that back, but it's still you know, almost two mil increase just in uh, the, the PISA part of it. And that's only going to continue to grow. What is the. Uh people who have the authority to do something done about it? Uh, they've kicked the can down the road, if anything. They've, they've not done anything to address uh, future employees. They really, you know, nobody wants to touch this this issue. Um, and quite honestly, it should be a no-brainer, at least for new employees coming in and change the system so that it's manageable down the road, but they're just not there yet. So who's left to deal with this problem? So it gets pushed down to us at the local level to deal with it. and. Um, Again, not that, not that we ever want to raise taxes, but we're limited in, in the amount of revenue we can raise locally, so it really ties the director's hands in what we can do. And as a result, a lot of times I think we end up cutting our educational programs to a degree, and that's really the worst thing that we can do, but it's sometimes the only option we have. I mean, look at the number of teachers we've, we've reduced in the last seven years, eight years. You know, we're down 40 or 50 teachers, so um, those are classroom assets that are gone. So with that in mind, this is our starting point, and we will be working between now and the end of next month to make this as livable as possible. Okay, our current budget, we have $49.3 million. Uh, right now, for next year, we're at $50 million, or an increase of almost $800,000, which kind of coincidentally ties into our PISA's number, but there are other factors as well. Overall, that's only 1.6% increase. Uh, fortunately, through attrition, you know, we're hiring most everybody uh, that retired. We're not eliminating positions this year, but the savings on those salaries uh, has helped somewhat. 
Revenue last year, again, was, was in line with expenditures. This year, we're currently at $49.6 million, or $341,000 increase, at, which represents 0.69%. Uh, as we can see, this continues. The local share continues to increase. We're out to 53% funded locally, 45% from the state, and a very small portion, less than 2%, comes from the federal government. Uh, 45 cents, that includes transportation. That includes transportation, that includes debt service, that includes the retirement, the Social Security. What, what, what is our instruction percentage? Do you know what that would be about? 30%? It's, uh, it's about. 35 percent. And technically, isn't it supposed to be 50 50? Yes, that's, that's, that's technically It keeps right. going the opposite directions every year. Right, it does. Okay, our, our, our local revenues, we're looking at an increase of $762,000. And there is going to be an adjustment to the millage based on the preliminary budget. We hope that that goes away by next month, but that's where we're at right now. The decrease in the state funding of $448,000 basically is because our reimbursement on our bonds is going away. Our old bonds, which we were getting reimbursed for, are going away. So our net debt service is the same, but that's why the big decrease there, because that was uh, you know over a million dollar revenue item. Uh, federal revenue is just a very small increase. Uh, we've been having problems with access funding. Hopefully they're resolved, but uh, there's been a big backlog in terms of getting those funds. And uh, I don't know, Mr. Karazia, they, they, are they working on getting that fixed finally? No school district this year has received any access funding at all. And it's, it's just uh, kind of like all in limbo right now waiting for it. Yeah, so and for us that's five hundred some thousand dollars. Five to seven hundred thousand that we so, look forward to. That's a big piece of revenue that we haven't got yet this year. We anticipate getting it, but who knows when. So again, our revenues overall are increasing by $341,000. Does the access money come from the feds or the state level? It comes from the federal. It's a federal revenue source. Passed through the state, but it, it's considered federal revenue. Okay, yes. thank you. Yeah. Okay, again, just recapping, the, the local revenue up $762,000. State down 448000 And the federal, a very small increase, $28,000, assuming access gets fixed. So again, overall $341,000 increase, or 0.69%. So a very modest increase in our revenues. Okay, on the expenditure side, uh, again, 50, almost 58% goes to instructional areas. 31.5% uh, support. 3.67 is uh, non-instructional. That's kind of our student activities. And the other uses, which is our debt service, is uh, approximately 7%. Okay, uh, in instruction, an increase of $1.1 million. Um, that is the combination of the increase in the PEASERS, uh, a slight increase in our health care costs, and we shifted some personnel from the support area and replaced them with instructional people. The librarians, for example, we didn't replace two of those, but they're now becoming uh, instructional areas. So that's a 4.3% increase. Support relatively level because of those positions we've eliminated. Uh, Non-instruction, uh, that's our, uh, again, our student activities, a, a modest increase as our, as our programs just continue to expand. And our debt service uh, down $500,000 essentially. So uh, total expenditures in total 792000 or 1.61%. Uh, there's the, the regular programs, a uh, 5.4% increase. Again, most of that is all in the benefit line. Uh, Right. I'm sorry. Yes. You just said like um, you weren't eliminating jobs, and then just now you said you're eliminating support jobs. Yeah, you told me that too. We are replacing t uh, library positions with teaching positions. Okay. So you're not eliminating custodian jobs. There are no custodial positions being eliminated. No. What about the ones retired? All right. This really isn't a question and answer session right now. Okay. okay. If you have questions you'd like to address, you can send them to me. Uh, special education, an increase of $72,000 or 2.6%. Basically, again, mostly in the PEASERS line item. Uh, uh, that should be a decrease. There's an error in the slide. But our voc ed is down 11%. If based on enrollment, our costs are going to be down $50,000. Uh, 
uh, other instructional support, that's our federal programs. Just again, because of a change in personnel, we're seeing a decrease of about $75,000. Pupil personnel services up $67,000. Again, most all these increases you're going to find are going to be in the Peasers area. Supplemental instruction, that's the uh, two uh, library positions that have been converted to iTech positions at the middle school. Administrative services, $58,000. Uh, that's the superintendent's office, principal's office. Again, most all of that is in uh, Peasers or healthcare. Health services, we've actually eliminated a nursing position, and that's become a position, another position at the high school. Uh, so that area is down to $69,000. Business services, $16,000 or 3.3%. Again, that would be, I think the only increase was in the Peasers and healthcare. Operation of plant, uh, decrease of $24,000, uh, just reflects some savings on um, different staffing that we have, uh, so a very modest decrease of 0.4%. Transportation, uh, Dr. Harris has done a great job managing transportation, eliminating unnecessary runs, so our increase is only 0.4% as opposed to the 3% per year that the rates go up. Technology, um, a part of this is for the uh, lease that you're going to approve for the high school tonight. Um, it also includes some, again, benefit increases, and it reflects the uh, actual expenditures we've had the last couple of years uh, for software programs, et cetera, that uh, have increased what we're spending on technology every year. Other services, these are our cafeteria aids and our IU uh, contribution. Uh, we have eliminated some of those positions through the years uh, by attrition, so we have a decrease of $43,000 there. Student activities, again, mostly uh, reflects the increases in the in the PEASERS on those salaries, so about a 6.5% increase or $106,000. Community services, that's our contributions to PTARP, the rec boards, libraries, and the crossing guards down at Trafford, that's, there's no change there. Uh, again, debt service, a big decrease because our old bonds, which were reimbursable, are being paid off in full. We're now in the new bonds, so we have a decrease in our overall debt service, but we also have a uh, decrease in the revenues we saw earlier under the state source. Fund transfers, $25,000, we keep that in reserve. Uh, in the event we need to cover cafeteria expenses. Um, this $350,000 we have in reserve would only be expended if we get that additional money from the governor. So we're not showing that revenue yet because it's not in, but we have a placekeeper in the budget for the expenditures in the event that uh, it does come through. So that will only be spent if we get the dollars. So again, overall, taking all that into consideration, um, the overall increase of $792,000 or 1.6%. Uh, quite honestly, with the increase in PEASERS, uh, that's a pretty modest increase that we were able to do through um, well, the uh, debt service going down and the attritional savings on replacing retiring staff. But to get there, the, the preliminary budget would increase two mills to the, uh, to the budget. And we'd be using about $150,000 in the fund balance that we've saved up for uh, the PEASERS reserve. So knowing what we know right now, that would be the recommendation for the preliminary budget. Uh, so for the average homeowner, you're talking a $55 uh, a year increase. What does the index say? Just like we're on increase 2.1. So we're right at the index essentially. Uh, again, this is the first increase we've had in three years. Nobody likes increases. We can get booed for it, but the facts are the facts. I mean, that's where we're at. And you can see how the PEASERS right now, we're at 21.4% uh, for next year. We still have to get to 25, 29, and 30. So we still have uh, you know, almost 
additional to go, which is going to be, you know, you figure it was $800,000 this year, it'll be $800,000 next year probably as well. We're close to it. That's it. Questions? Yes, sir. When do we anticipate the actual money that we count on to be sent? When, when will that come in? So we, there was a couple points of uh, guest, no, it's like estimation, but estimating. When will we know for a fact? You know, Dr. Koshka, there is no guarantee that we'll know before June 30th. Right. Uh, again, we're mandated to pass our budget. The state is supposed to pass theirs by June 30th, but it very rarely happens. Uh, even though the, the you know one party has the governor in both houses uh, with the election year, <clears throat> I'm guessing it's going to go late into the year. Now, we can always reopen the budget if they pass it after June 30th. So if we find out after June 30th that you know we're going to get 500,000 more dollars, we can reopen our budget and make adjustments then. Well, there's no time frame on it. I would suspect if that happens, that would probably happen a little sooner because they're trying to give some legislators want to give districts relief. So they know that we have to pass our budget. So I would expect if that happens, it would happen before we pass our final budget. And if that means, you know, if we get an additional relief of $275,000, well, we could reduce our proposed increase to one mil potentially, just on that area alone. Any other questions? Again, it's preliminary. Um, we hope when we come back in June, we can say that we're, we're not going to have to go two mills, but <coughs> given what we know right now, that's, the, that's, that's where we're at. Yes, sir. Brett, with the uh, different variables that you've announced, uh, PEASERS and state funding regarding the wor worst case scenario is what we're looking at now. Correct. Best case scenario, how far back does it roll? Everything goes right the way we'd like it to as far as what you'd be requesting as a mill for increase. Well, if, if, if we get relief on PEASERS, and if we can use, if we get the additional state funds and there are no strings attached, then potentially the entire increase could go away. And the access funding, where does that come into play there, the 500,000 access funding? Uh, that's on our federal revenues. We're anticipating we're getting it. It's just a timing thing. Uh, the, the money is supposed to be released. They're holding hearings now in Harrisburg. So we fully, now we may not get it this year. We might have to carry it over as a receivable. But we fully anticipate it. Doesn't, it doesn't induce no uh, challenge we have with it. No. Yeah. No, that has no impact on the budget. Right. No, we're assuming we'll get that money, yes. And then moving forward, how many more years do we have to face this um, Pisa's earthquake before we get to the, we're just getting the beginning shocks of it, I'm sure. There's a lot more coming. How how far, you had that graph up, but I couldn't read the little will we numbers, the bar graph. Yeah. Um, well, actually, that was. 16.17 was 29%, 17.18 is 30%, then it goes to 32% the following year, and that pretty much takes you to the top. We're at 21 this year, right? Correct. And we've got to get to, third, I think, 33 it is right now. And before all this started, what percentage was it? Oh, it, it, was, it was a little over 1% years ago. And it should have been funded at least 4%, and that would help exasperate this hole that we're in. Uh, so um, they have now established a floor of 4%, but you'll never see that in our lifetime. And I guess everybody in the room understands that PEASERS is deferred compensation that we, we are obligated to pay, no matter how much we like it or don't like it. It's, it's deferred compensation beyond the employment <coughs> years of the uh, current staff and past staff. So. It's, it's, big it's a huge obligation getting bigger and bigger. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that, that's unheard of in uh, private industry that uh, you're contributing 32 to 33 percent toward employee post retirement benefits. But that's that's where we're at. And again, they, they really need to do something to address that going forward. But nobody's introduced any legislation to that effect yet that has any sort of support. Is it true that they cannot do anything about the people currently in the system? Well, that's a, that's that's a, think, yeah. that's a, that's a question that can be argued both ways. 
it's pretty pretty sure that they can't affect any any benefits that have already been earned. So if you have 20 years in and the modifier is two and a half percent, they can't change that. You have to get 20 years at two and a half percent. The debate is whether for those same employees that you can modify their pension going forward so that in the end of their career, the last 10 years, they would go back to 2%. There's arguments both ways. You know, one side argues that, no, you can't do that. The governor's point is he thinks he can do that. But it hasn't been challenged. But he hasn't done it. But he hasn't done it. Oh, no. it Did, wasn't there a court case once spread on something like that? Didn't they some go to court? Yes, they I thought. I thought there was a court ruling. But again, I think that what the governor is arguing is that only applies to what you have already earned. Okay. He's saying what you earn going forward, he can modify. But that's not, you know, it hasn't been argued, it hasn't, you know, because both sides think the they're Supreme right about it. The Supreme Court hasn't yeah. ruled on it, right. basically. Because he right. tried to cut the president employee's uh, retirement down and it was ruled, he, it was ruled that they cannot touch the retirement. So, Back in like 2001 or two, it went from the modifier went from two to two and a half percent. Correct. So we can move it up, but we just can't move it down. Well, for new employees, but not for the current one. Yeah. When back in 2001 or two, it went up. It went up for everybody, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. We can't move that modifier. No. 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 We got the legislative action. No, no. What I'm that. saying back in. Right now, it does not appear that Corbett can move that, or the current legislature can move that for current employees. But they can move it up if they want to. Well, they can make it higher. But again, Corbett, Corbett has made the argument that he can, he can move it down mm -hmm. for the remainder of your career. But keep in mind, that would take legislative action, and you know who were covered by PEASERS, or the state retirement system, or all the legislators. Mm, that's true, too. So chances of them cutting their own pension are probably pretty slim. And that's why this thing doesn't have any traction, because if they do anything, they're affecting themselves. Now, this question might be more for our understanding, yeah. but um, the, the distressed situation that school districts, which we would hope never get into, but there's districts that we can almost hit with a stone are there. Well, how does that affect the PEASERs, and is that how their obligations carry through in those distressed districts, like Duquesne, I believe, is one of them? Well, yeah. they just owe the money. It just continues to accrue. Ooh. I mean, if they don't have the money to pay it, it's just going to continue to accrue. And there are distressed districts where the governor actually sent, there's there's an account of, with money in it. And mm -hmm. like in Chester Upland School District where he's Harrisburg. written checks, you know, to those districts for different things. But it's at the discretion of the governor. It's not legislative action. And it's, it's whatever. But I would think ultimately, you know, the state's responsible if a school district fails. So if it fails, it's going to be responsible for meeting its obligations. Yeah, they're going to have to pay the pensions. It's just like they might just might not get the contribution from the district. Right. So, Matt, knowing that we're sitting at two mills now, and if obviously it's worst case scenario, uh, over the next couple of weeks, is there a chance that you could go back and see if we had to do something programmatically wise? just so we could see what that may look like as options to, to get that millage down. I know a lot of it's in the Peasers, I understand. That. But knowing that, uh, just as another comparison to say, hey, listen, we use a lot of opportunity, but this is what you're going to give up in order to do that. We I can, can have, um, take a I can look at it with Scott, myself, Greg, Brad, and I can have each principal look at their budget one more time. We do that all year long. No, I know. We, um, That's why I don't think there's quite a You look at staff take numbers. Look at before we well, I, and again, you know, some of the things that I think we start to look at is deferred maintenance. You know, you get the items that we've been doing every year, trying to stay on top of them. Can we sacrifice a year and say, you know, knock out a mill's worth of repairs? Right. It's potential. Yeah. It is. But just, um, just so we're aware of what the opportunity may be. I know it's, it's pretty tight, but um, two mil increase on the... Is it still a two million increase that we want to try to reduce? So. But we we can bring you back some ideas. They may not be good ideas, but we yeah. can bring you back some ideas and kick them around. And sure. um, you know, said our goal is to have a zero mill increase. But sitting where we're at right now, that's where that's where we're at. So we'll keep working on it though. Thank you. And hopefully, you know, information from the state will clear up and that'll give us a better idea. It's really hard to build a budget when you don't know what your one of your major revenue sources is. And, you know. 
it was easier when Peasers wasn't at 21%. Anything else I can answer for anybody? Thank you. And you know, let me just call me, email me, whatever. You have questions during the week. Thank you. you know where to find me. Tell me. Okay. The budget is open to the public for 30 days. It'll be on the website probably tomorrow. So if anybody has any questions, and explore it. And Mr. Lego will be answering any questions. Or yep. And the only other thing under information, Dr. Trey gave me an announcement earlier. Make sure I share the Southwestern Region 3 for Westmoreland County Spring Cabinet Meeting is on Saturday, May 31st from 11 to 12 at the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit. Do you have any more information on that, Dr. Trey, or Pardon? do you have any more information? Or, or no, the, it's, it's a multiple agendas, and we always have uh, representation from the uh, various legislators and the senators. So they bring us up-to-date information, uh, probably budget-oriented at that stage. So it's, it's valuable there. Any colleagues would like to go with me, love to have you. Thank you. That's all I have, Doctor. I mean, no, I'm not the doctor. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Okay, at this time is um, time for audience recognition. The following rules are in effect. You must state your name, address, and group affiliation, if any. Your statement will be limited to five minutes in duration. All statements shall be directed to the president, and no participant may address or question a board member individually. I may interrupt your statement. If your statement is too lengthy, personally direct, abusive, obscene, or irrelevant. It, um, I do have a list of residents who wish to address the board. Your name will be called in the order in which you sign up. And we cut off sign up, we cut off sign ups at seven o'clock. Okay, the first one is no Michelle. 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 Thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time. Um, my name is Linda Michaud. I live at 214 Connor Drive, Penn Trafford School District resident, and I'm the tennis coach for the boys. The reason I'm here to talk to you tonight is because, well, first of all, I had the opportunity, by the way, I am a retired teacher, I think a business teacher from Penn Trafford High School, but I had the opportunity to coach the girls tennis team for 13 years and the boys currently for the past seven. Out of those 20 seasons, we've made it to the Whippy Old Team Playoff every year but one. So I'm very, very proud of our players and proud of the students. If you've ever been to a tennis match, you would, you would understand that in order to win the match, you need to play first singles, second singles, third singles, first doubles, and then second doubles. And so out of the five matches, you have to win three, okay? Now, the problem is, we only have three tennis courts, and we need to play five matches. You know, um, our boys team in the past three years have won the section title despite the fact that we only have these three courts. It's, it's very difficult because we have to run two practices, a varsity practice and then a JV practice, but, but we still seem to, to do well. Um, I'm very proud of them to win that section title the last three years. Out of the schools in our section, we are the only school that only has three courts. As a matter of fact, I really don't know of another school except possibly Woodland Hills that only has three courts. I'm talking throughout Pittsburgh, throughout maybe Pennsylvania. I mean, really, only having three courts is just not heard of. Second problem we have with our courts is that they're made out of a substance called hard true, some kind of a hard true substance. And Tennis matches are played on hard court. Now, a hard court is asphalt with some kind of sand-based, lake-cold chemical put on the top. So now, what I'm asking for is five hard courts. And if you're not familiar with what that is, if you watch the US Open in New York, that's, that's what a hard court is. But you know, in our section, when we go to Greensburg-Salem or Connellsville, they, both of those schools have four courts. When we go to Lake Trobe, and Franklin, both of those schools have five courts. Now, Lake Trobe just did a renovation project last year. They only had four courts at the time. They've, they've added another court, and so um, their school district can, can definitely um, handle the whole match at one time. Even better, Hemfield and Norwin has six hard courts. So you see, Penn Trafford not only doesn't have the right surface with the carpeting, but we also only have three courts. And when I tell you, uh, honestly, I don't know of another school but Woodland Hills that only has three courts. 
So I think with our success that we've shown in the past, and truly, my heart is for the community members and the students of Penn Trafford. I feel that they deserve what the students at Franklin are getting and the students at Norwin, Hemfield, Latrobe. And so I ask you to please, with this new project that you're doing, um, I, I really hope that you will put in five hard courts because that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, no. For, for somebody up here, I know that that's one of our ad alternates. Yeah, I just look at the list now. Well, my it's question to, and sure. we don't have Dan or Hank here to ask this question to. Uh, I didn't. This is the first time I'm hearing about the uh, hard court situation. Do you know if that uh, is included in that? I, I doubt that it is. And, Right, Brett? This just says two additional so. tennis courts. Those two, two additional tennis courts are uh, spec to be exactly like the uh, the three that are existing, mm -hmm. just for consistency. So we, the answer would be no. no we we didn't not. want to do three of the, what's the service called now we have? We, it's just a hard two service. Whatever service. you call it. We didn't want to have three of the, the uh, one service and two of the hard. So Mr. Hetrick advised to keep the, the courts the same. I don't know that, I don't know that it can be changed. I think it can be, but well, you know, in the alternate, if it needs to be hard, I think that's an option is what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. Um, you know, since I've been here forever <laughs> as a teacher, when we went to this hard to surface, Kiski also had that. But since then, Kiski has changed all their courts to five hard courts. I guess it was something popular 20-some years ago. You know, we, we need five courts. If you can afford to do five hard courts, that would be like doing the whole project the right way. So that's what I'm asking you for. I mean, really, when the other schools come to our school, it, it really is somewhat of an embarrassment, both because of the surface and because we only have three courts. Mr. So, so, do you yes. have a figure what it costs to one, just one of those hard courts you're asking about? Well, actually, I have a hard court in my backyard. Yeah, but we did put it in about 17 years ago. So, um, but you know what? All it is is, um, you know, of course you have to do the drainage and then put lots of stone and then asphalt and then the topping, which we used, which was called Laykold, L-A-Y-K-O-L-D. And it doesn't have to be that expensive. So... Okay. You, you know, you know the, the current courts are they asphalt underneath? Right. But they could be they could be stripped and renovated to. Sure. Sure. So it wouldn't be it wouldn't be installing three brand new court complete courts there. The two you would need, to get five you would need to install two complete courts, but just resurface those three existing. Right. You you have to, to let a contractor. <coughs> right. I understand that, but they are asphalt. Well, those courts are really old. I mean, they're probably how old? 30, 42 years old. Right, 42. Wow. So, you know, after 42 years, everything kind of breaks down. So you would have to look at a at a contractor and talk to them about what they think. Right. But um, you, should, you, yeah, consider, I, you know, look at it. Right. Oh. When, so. Get some numbers so we know what we're dealing with. Right. Right. That number does not include resurfacing the three existing. Right. We understand, understand that. that. We it's understand just that. Two new ones. <laughs> I understand that. So I thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, Rosemary Stashko. Good evening, everybody. My name is Rosemary Stashko, and I live at 1010 Noble Pine Court in, in Level Green. And um, I'm a USPTA teaching professional, developmental coach, and I've worked at the club sport and health for, for 10 years. And uh, don't boo me here. <laughs> I am the head coach um, at, at Plum High School for both the uh, boys and, and the girls teams. Um, my major concern is uh, for the safety of our course. I was out there walking around. Now, mind you, I have uh, two sons that have graduated. One will graduate this year. Uh, both spent four years with uh, Mrs. Michaud. Out of those three, um, I've three out of the last four years that they've, they've won the section. I just took a took a walk. I'm not out there on these particular courts, um, but it is the hard court underneath, and I've noticed there's a bunch of waves, 
in, in those courts. I mean, it, it could potentially be a liability issue, and I, I don't want it to turn out to be that. Um, it's, it's just extremely bumpy out there, and um, I feel that the viewing area of the courts, too, being uh, abutting the road, I mean, there's very little viewing area, and I've been there when, when, when cars are, are, are going pretty fast, um, and I'm just, uh, just afraid for the kids' kid safety, um, especially during, you know, a uh, you know, football game, something else big going, going on at the high school. Okay, so my, my main issues are, are, are of course, the um, safety of the kids, and I have another one coming up that will dedicate uh, four years to the to the tennis team. So, um, I mean, along, along with Mrs. Michaud and being a coach, coach myself at Plum, at Plum we have four courts. Yes, the ideal is five courts. The ideal is the way the matches have to be run. It gives everybody a chance to play. Um, every 10 years, because I asked this question uh, of, of Plum, how many years do they resurface their courts? It's every 10 years, and um, I know Gateway just uh, resurfaced theirs. I'm getting new ones um, resurfaced now, not a, not a total dig up or anything. Um, so they, they actually, you know, budget that out. Every 10 years they get resurfaced. So um, I just want to can ask you guys to continue what I've started here and what Mrs. Michaud started, the sport of a lifetime. I mean, it is a sport of a lifetime. These are the only three courts here. In, in, in Penn Township and well with the exception of Trafford Middle I think they have do they have a couple over there yes. they use, um, not in very good shape no, they've been here a while but they're, they're usable now uh, Mr. Bracco he reconditioned as much as he could they, they used the gym last night yes mm -hmm. I do agree with Mrs. Michaud that they should be a, a hard court surface it is the predominant surface um, taking my, my sons around to Philadelphia um, Lancaster I mean, that's predominantly the surface. If it's done right, they'll drain um, well, and you know, with, with minimal um, maintenance, um, they should last a long time. I thank you. Yeah, there is, the, you can see the hard court uh, where the viewing area is. You can see they, they were red and, red and green at one time. Um, so there is that hard court surface, but um, my fear is Underneath those three courts, it is wavy. It, 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 you know, the, the the surface that's on there now, it's 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 kind of like she called Mrs. Michelle called it a hard true. It's more like a carpeting surface that it is really worn, and there's sand on it, and um, but the surf it just covers up the surface, which is imperfect to begin with. And you, you, you can just go out there and, and, and see the waves, uh, you know, waves of the courts. So I, I do definitely think it's becoming becoming a liability issue. So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lee. Hi, uh, my name is Feng Bum Lee. I'm a father of uh, three tennis players. Uh, my oldest uh, son, he's going to join here next year. And um, uh, uh, I have been, uh, I play tennis too. <laughs> okay. uh, we have been playing, you know, we have been using this court for about seven years here. So I know which part is uh, like uh, uneven, which part is going up, which part is going down. and. Uh, First of all, uh, we are traveling a lot to go, uh, like, go New Jersey, Philadelphia, and uh, uh, because my kids, they, atten they attend the competitive uh, tournament. Okay, and uh, I haven't seen any uh, carpet type uh, tennis court, uh, like Pittsburgh area and New Jersey in Philadelphia. I haven't seen, because the problem is, um, first of all, the ball doesn't bounce. Here, this is carpet type, the ball uh, doesn't bounce a lot. So what happens in um, like a student from Lettrop and the other area, they come here and then they play here. Oh, come on, the ball doesn't bounce. Also, sometimes the, the surface is uneven. That means ball the bounce, ball hit the ground and it bounces weird, something like uh, so weird. So they say, oh, it's not fair <laughs> to, 
Hopefully, yeah. So some see, uh, sometimes it, you know, other high school students like uh, um, they see it like that. And um, and I talked about uneven. It's it's right now it's so uneven. And so another problem is uh, if you go uh, let's just say I, I don't know that area. If you see those uh, three courts there, like if you go like uh, right and back side of the court, the the ground is going down actually. The, the, the whole ground is going down. So if you keep ball there, and the ball is gonna roll all by itself, that's uh, another problem. Okay, and the, uh, the last one is, um, um, since we have here three uh, courts, like uh, right now more people, more and more people, like all the students, they wanna play uh, tennis because if the temperature is uh, uh, high enough, and uh, sometimes, you know, uh, some you know students here they are waiting, okay, for their turn, or they are going to they uh, some you know students they go they go Franklin, okay. But if you go Franklin, <laughs> they have nice uh, five uh, hard courts. Then uh, that area is also so crowded. So that's just also another uh, issue. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Chris Seaman. I live at 103 Damien Court in Jeanette. Uh, my son Timothy is a player on the boys varsity tennis team. Uh, I'm especially concerned about the safety of the courts. I don't know if any members of the school board have actually walked the courts. Uh, in the summer when it's a little bit humid, that is a very, very slick surface. And so uh, I worry about my son playing on that surface. Uh, he is very interested in playing tennis in college. Uh, the school has a very fine program, as mentioned by Mrs. Michaud, of the number of times we've been to sections. We've sent uh, both boys and girls to states for tennis, so there's a lot to be proud of. Right now, uh, just off the top of her head, uh, Mrs. Michaud came up with five students, Megan Hudak, C.J. Price, Maria Ivino, Anthony Bukowski, and Christina Vecchiola, who are all on scholarships for tennis because they got their start here. I think we owe the students who play tennis, the same level of facilities that we give our other varsity athletes. And I would really hate to think that a student had a career ending injury on our courts because of a slick surface that we chose not to fix. Uh, there's, as well as the surface, there are other issues with the orientation of the courts. Uh, the sun sets in the uh, to the west, which is one of the facing directions. So any of the late afternoon matches that are held, students have the sun in their eyes, so it's difficult to see the ball coming at them. We also have not even gone to the simple step of putting up a windscreen on the back. So in the very windy days during the spring uh, tennis season, the, it's a challenge for any of the students who are playing varsity matches to qualify for Wimbledon <coughs> in just uh, substandard uh, facilities. So I think the school board owes to look at that and look at other school districts and at least bring it to parity with what other school districts have. Thank you. That's all we have. Um, all right. Moving back. Um, to, um, yeah. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the treasurer's report in the high school extracurricular fund? Um, so Motion by Mr. Petrucci. Second. Second by Mr. Petrucci. Question. Question being called for. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. May I have a motion to approve the list of bills for the month of May? Motion. Motion by Mr. Lyons. Second. Second by Mr. Petrucci. Second. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. <coughs> okay. Um, any old business? None seen in this time, President. Thank you. Um, we had a, an executive session prior to this meeting, so we don't have a need to move at this um, to meet at this time. During that executive session, we discussed some student disciplinary matters, some personnel matters, some legal matters, um, negotiation. And to receive, um, we meant to receive <coughs> some information regarding the budget. 
Okay, moving on to new business. Um, Dr. Koshko, athletics and extracurricular. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, move to accept the following resignations effective immediately. Anthony Barrario, assistant track coach. Brittany Chido, assistant girls basketball coach. Uh, Robert Dibbins, ninth grade boys assistant basketball coach. Russell Gratton, the assistant varsity football coach. Olivia Rizzo, assistant girls basketball coach. And Sonny Thomas, assistant varsity football coach. Second by Mr. Patrice. Question. Question being called for. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to open the following position. Seventh grade girls basketball coaching position at Penn Middle. Eighth grade boys basketball coaching position at Trafford Middle. And ninth grade boys assistant basketball coaching position. Second. Second by Mr. Leonard. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to approve the following, following volunteer coaches. Contingent upon the receipt of all necessary documentation and acceptance of Act 34, 151, and 114 waivers from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania within 30 days. Volunteer assistant, varsity football coach, Russell Gratton, Tony Mans Manasia, Cameron Saba. From Gateway? Yeah. Volunteer assistant girls basketball coach Brittany Chido and Olivia Rizzo. Second. Second by Mr. Patricia. Question. Question being called for. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Just to have one point He was coached by Nice career down at Pitt. Oh, excellent. He did have a great career at Pitt. He's a great volunteer coach. He was an excellent And, um, you know what? He's quite frankly involved over the summer in the baseball program. He is very He's a classy guy. He is. He's really good around the kids, so I think that's going to be, that'll be a nice addition. Yeah, him and Coach Ruan were very, very close to Okay, cool. Move to approve the adoption of a rifle club is presented to the board. Second. Second by Mr. Lowndes. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. That'll be all, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Koshko. Mr. Kachasik, budget and finance. Thank you, Madam President. Move to adopt resolution approving the proposed 2014 15 budget for the Central Westmoreland Career and Technology Center in the amount of $7,884,408. Second. Second by Mr. Petrucci. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Move to adopt a resolution approving the 2014 15 anticipation loan for the amount of $6 million of the First National Bank at 0.97% fixed rate for the Central Westmoreland Career and Technology Center. Second. Question. Second by Mr. Leonard. Question. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to prepare a resolution authorizing CWCTC to establish a capital reserve fund without the current restriction of use for a telephone and fire alarm system. Second. Second by Mr. Patrice. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Move to approve the following compensation rates for aides, health room technicians, substitute teachers, and substitute support personnel for the 2014-15 school year. There will be no increase from the 2013-14 school year, as listed. Second. Second by Mr. Patrice. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to designate ST Bank and or its successor as treasurer of the Penn Trafford School District for the 2014-15 school year at no cost to the district. Second. Second by Mr. Patrice. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor, the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to approve the following expenditures for the month of April 2014 for the high school renovation project according to schedule. Builder's risk premium at $42,900 and the Farland Kissler and Associates for $6,600. Second. Second by Mr. Patrice. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. 
Motion carried. Move to tentatively adopt the preliminary budget for the Penn Traffic School District for the 2014-15 school year in the total amount of fifty million ninety eight dollars fifty eight million ninety eight thousand two hundred eleven for advertisement and publication in accordance with the district policy and the school laws of Pennsylvania. The preliminary budget calls for a two million increase in real estate tax of our total uh, seventy six point eight five mills. The rate for Allegheny County was sixteen point three six. Second. Second by Mr. Patrice. Question. Uh, before we go to I, I have a couple comments as opposed to questions. I just want to make the uh, notation that this for me this is not necessarily my my sanctioning of a two million increase. It's preliminary to move forward to the next step for further evaluation. So I'm not stipulating by any vote I would make um, agreeing to a two million increase at this time. Question. Um, question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to approve the purchase of iPads, laptops, and carts for use district wide at a cost of $723,598.50 as presented to the board. Second. Second by Mr. Patrice. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. That is all, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Katastic. Mr. Leonard, Buildings and Grounds and Safety. I have nothing to type, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nemec, Employee Relations, Negotiations, and Transportation. Nothing tonight, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Nemec. Um, Dr. Trey, Food Service. Uh, three items, Madam President. Uh, first, I'd like to move to enter into an agreement with Aramark Education as our lowest bidder at 1101 Market Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to operate, administer, and manage the food service program for the Penn Traffic School District. The, the guarantee proposal of Aramark Education follows uh, as follows. It will provide a surplus guaranteed return to our district for 2014 and 15 uh, of $25,142. And uh, it will work with the district to identify options to replace aged equipment as designated by the district up to $20,000 over the course of the contract. Second. Question. Second by Mr. Jackson. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Second item is to move to approve the following <coughs> breakfast and lunch prices for the 2014-2015 school year as listed. Second. Second by Mr. Leonard. Question. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. And finally, move to approve the following mill prices for the 2014-15 school year. There will be no increase from 2013-2014. Second. As listed. Question. Question B. Second by Mr. Lennon. Okay. Um, question being called for. Sorry. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you, Dr. Trey. Mr. Petrucci, personnel and curriculum. Thank you, Move to approve additional substitute teacher and support personnel for the month of May 2014. Second. Second by Mr. Petrucci. Motion. Question being called for. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to authorize administration issue reasonable assurance of employment notices to all eligible employees for 2014-15 school year. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Petrucci. Question. Question being called for. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to employ the following summer help, $8 an hour effective May 27, 2014. Uh, technology help is uh, James Chismar, Steve Fulton, Jeff Gutson, Vincent Markolinski, ground help, Ryan Raston, Caleb Mason. Second. Second by Mr. Kachassi. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to approve the following FMLA leave request. Barbara Clark, Heather Colvin, on Fazio, Jenna Huffman, Vera Moog, Allison Sinawaski, Roseanne Triani. As does the rest of the day. Second. Second by Mr. Cassidy. Question. This will be question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to approve the following student teacher 
and intern assignments for 2014 school year as well. Second. Second by Mr. Kachassi. Question. Question being called for. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to put a following revisions 2014-15 calendar school year. Monday, April 6, 2015 will become the fourth makeup day. Commencement will be Thursday, May 21st, 2015 for graduating seniors instead of Friday, May 22nd. The last day of school will be Friday, May 22nd, 2015 for grades K to 11. Second. Second by Mr. Leonard. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to put the following conference request Chad Wasso, Glenn Cooper, and Brenda Christopher. And the rest of that listed. Second. Second by Mr. Fantastic. Question. Question. Okay, question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Move to put the following books for AP World History of 2014 15 school year. They are in the textbook budget according to the textbook. Uh, textbook cycle. The title, there's two books. The title is World Civilization uh, and the title of the other books the, the Global Experience Go Across the My History Lab. It's the sixth edition. And B is The Ways of the World, a Global History with Launchpad and Ebook, second edition. As listed in the rest. Second. Second by Mr. Kachassi. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Moving for the following professional employees effective April 18, 2014, to teach in areas <coughs> their respective certification as a sign of administration. Employment is a contingent appointment and receipt of signed contract not later than Friday, May 16, 2014. Subsequent receipt of all necessary certification documentation and extends Act 34, 151, Act 14 waivers from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, first is Samantha Carney. Step 2B, salary $43,100. B is Andrea Rescura. Step 1B, $42,300. Then Leslie Santacola. Step 8, PhD, $52,765. I will second that, but I just have one minor correction. Yes, I heard you wrong. You said April, but it, it's August 18th. I believe you said April. I probably did. I apologize for that. Second by Mr. Leonard. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. So, I, I, I think some of them are here. Yes, yeah, so can you introduce Yes, some of us are here. Um, I see some of them. First one, and actually she's an alumni of Penn Trafford, Andrea Fisker. Which year did you graduate, Andrea? 2009. 2000, a recent graduate. Yeah. <laughs> And how many years have you been working with the Penn Trafford chorus and band and everything? This has been my fourth year with the musical as the vocal director. Um, but I help out with the chorus department whenever Mrs. Rubright needs me to. We appreciate all your efforts. And Andrea will be taken over at the elementary school. She'll be at Level Green, Trafford Elementary, and Harrison Park teaching elementary music. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. And our second person who is here is actually we have another PhD in the house, Dr. <laughs> Leslie Santacola. <laughs> She's actually going to be doing multiple duties. She has an English certification and a business certification. She'll be teaching three English classes at the high school and three business classes at the high school. So we are very lucky to have you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. From I'm sorry? Are you coming from Greensburg? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. And Samantha Carney, she's actually in the state of Indiana. And their teaching lesson and every single interview she actually drove about seven and a half hours to come and I thought she was coming from Indiana because she said I got a hotel and I kept thinking well why are you giving me a hotel <laughs> and then it finally dawned me it was the state of Indiana so <laughs> very happy I told her please do not drive up for tonight it is okay so she is at home Very impressive people, and actually this year we actually interviewed people. We Skyped from Sweden, and we Skyped people from Japan. So we went all, all around trying to find the best candidates, and we got two of them here tonight. So thank you. All right. Thanks, Mr. Petrucci. Um, Mr. Knowles not here. Who's going to be reading his tonight? All right, you want to? I, I can do that. Okay. Go for it. I would like to make uh, move to accept the fo and file the minutes of Superintendent's informational committee meeting held on Monday, April 7, 2014.
Second. Question to Mr. Patrice. Question. Question being called for. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. I'd also like to make a, I have a motion to approve the list of graduates, of which there will be 331 in the class of 2014, as submitted by Mr. Scott Inglese, Principal of Penfair High School, pending satisfactory completion of all the requirements for graduation as prescribed by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and Penfair School District. A copy of the list will be filed with the official minutes of this meeting. Second. Question. Second by Mr. Picasso. I believe it says someone said question. Okay. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. I just want to make a comment that this is Mr. Inglis's last high school graduation as a principal. How many years has it been? It's about 13. About 13 yep. years. Uh, good job. Job well done. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Very anxious to have Mr. Inglis has helped me on a full-time basis. So it would be greatly appreciated. Looking forward to it. And that is all I have under that uh, line. All right. Thank that. you, Mr. Leonard. Uh, Mr. Stovar, taxes, insurance, and census. I'm going to defer to... Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the board was asked to approve the Local Economic Revitalization Tax Assistance Act tonight. The Board of Dir School Directors has publicly, at a public meeting, stated their support of, of um, this act. However, the solicitor for the township stated um, to us this afternoon that they have to approve <laughs> the um, the act at their township meeting which occurs next monday evening so once that's approved then the county and the school district can give their official approval which won't happen until our next school board meeting in all, on, on june 19th and what we're going to do the solicitor's office is going to prepare a letter stating that so that um, our representative um, can take that to the township meeting on monday night um, to indicate that the, pu the public support of the Board of School Directors and also the fact that the resolution will be <coughs> adopted at the June 19th meeting in support of that. All right, thank you. Any so questions? Does anybody on the board have any questions? Are we having a June 2nd? Yeah. Yes, we are. So okay. we can, have the, we can vote we on can that. We can do it at the June 2nd meeting. Yeah. And so we'll put that in the letter right. that we do. Okay. All right. Um, now you're on again. Okay, Michelle. Um, the um, board in the executive session agreed to introduce a resolution tonight to accept the arbitrator's decision to expel a Penn Trafford student. So, Madam President, we need a motion to adopt a resolution to that effect. May I have a motion? It be resolved that the board, board of school directors of Penn Trafford School District hereby approves and adopts the attached ad education of, for student. Penn Trafford number 2013-2014, that school year to 00 number one, effective May 12, 2014. And the board secretary, Brett Lego, signed, and the board president, Mrs. Singh, did sign. Motion by Mr. Patrice. Second. Second by Mr. Cassidy. Question. Question being called for. This will be a roll call vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carried. Anything else? Michelle. That's all, thank you. Okay, well, you're not Mr. Ryanair, but you are Mr. Lazaro. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, um, do I have a motion for it? Well, I do want to make an announcement. Our next meeting is June 2nd. It's our informational, but we will be meeting right on the Lerda. And then our, our second meeting of the month is being moved from June 9th to June 19th. Which is, a Thursday night. Which is a Thursday night. It's a little bit different schedule. Can you explain why? Mm -hmm. it, okay, we will be opening bids um, for construction, and that night we will be awarding a bid. Our, and we'll be actually doing our final vote on the budget, correct? Correct. And we'll do our final vote on the budget that night. Okay, that being said, do I have a motion for adjournment? Motion. Second? Second. All right, this meeting is adjourned at 8.38. Thank you.